waiting for it. That's the way our quarterbacks will start spring practice. Seven in the morning with actually 30 minutes each on two days. <coughs> okay, subject uh, mini systems. Football plays have to be tied together. There is no defeating, there is no moving a defender if he doesn't want to be moved and he doesn't have anything to worry about. You can put a blocker on a defender and put a line and tell that blocker to move that defender and that defender can stop that blocker almost every time. Okay. Boom, it's a stalemate. What makes offense go is to have that defender worried about rushing the passer, pursuing the sweep, catching the bootleg, and doing all the things. Plays must be tied together. They always have been. When it was nothing but single wing in football, plays were tied unbelievably well together. There were two offenses, the power single wing, and you ran up there off tackle, and you ran, and then you dipped, and here came the reverse. And the whole thing was beautifully tied together. Or you went up there with the predecessor of the, the wing tee, and you made your face and the back spun, and the threats went both ways, and, and everything was tied together. Uh, defenders work through the evolution of defenses to find ways to keep you from having your systems work. And certainly, uh, systems vanish overnight, okay? Uh, I used to admire wing tee football. Forrest Evershevsky's Iowa team that won the national championship. One of the most aesthetically pleasing teams you could ever watch. Fine. People were trying to rotate defensive backfield. Bud Wilkinson's Oklahoma defense. You come, I come. You go, I go. Everything was rotating. And Olin Treadway, little quarterback, is flying one way and the back's going the other. And they couldn't rotate. And so they won the national championship. And then all of a sudden, people start playing too deep and they don't rotate. They just sit there and they go with flow. Uh, and the wing tee vanishes, boom, overnight. Uh, the, the beer used to be the rage. I remember the years when you'd, you'd get the question, you go to the beer, go to the beer, you go to the beer, who else go to the beer? You went to the beer because it was tearing defenses apart. And all of a sudden, people learned how to play gap control and sit in there and keep four defenders over three to stop the dive. And, and overnight, it vanished. Well, overnight, anything can vanish. But what can't vanish is the idea of tying plays together. Ideally, they're tied perfectly together. But ideally, uh, you, don't get to, you don't get to the ideal very often. Tying them together. Uh, we try to do it by saying faking is the linchpin, and the very language lends itself to <coughs> tying things together. Our head coach, Terry Donahue, will say in the middle of a game, we need to bring that back to life. In other words, we need to run in the counter plays for a while, and pretty soon that play will come back to life. <laughs> or we say we've, uh, uh, we've exhausted it. We don't have counter plays to bring it back to life. It runs out on us and we don't like that. Counter plays, counter plays. Here are some places where we attempt to have plays look alike. And listen, uh, we group plays by families. And with the families called by a number and fine. The play action passes in the family and the runs are called with the same length of, of calls. Uh, the same number of syllables, if you will. So that you stand up there and you may hear that a three is a certain kind of play, but you really don't know whether a three is going to be a reverse or a bootleg pass or a flow pass or even an inside run. It's just the family that goes together that is identified by the three. Uh, this is our sweep. <coughs> oh, here, here. Uh, sweep series. Okay, we take off 
and say that uh, we can call a sweep and run it no matter where they're lined up. The quarterback doesn't have to say anything. We will just go get them wherever they are. And the quarterback will fake always a bootleg pass off of the sweep <coughs> action. This is a sweep designed to run all the way to the perimeter. We call it a rim sweep. No, no, big, no big deal. Uh, next. Our roll action does not look exactly like the sweep action because the guard doesn't pull. And so it isn't a true look-alike. But uh, in the backfield, it should look just alike. Uh, the quarterback comes out on a sweep, comes out and pitches the ball and takes off on his bootleg face. If he's giving the ball to that fullback, he should come out the same way and go out with his bootleg fake the same way. Uh, for a long time, we tried to run a fullback play to curl back and took advantage of flow, but it didn't work. It didn't look enough like sweep. And so we've gone to the type of roll that stays nice and wide and runs behind zone blocking and all. Okay, the sweep and the roll. And I'm varying formations as I go here. Uh, as soon as <coughs> the blocking angles become really difficult, we retarget. We ask the center now to block to the backside, and we leave one of these perimeter defenders unblocked. Fine, we have a word that does that, and everyone, everyone does it. When you do that, you're going to have an unblocked man in the perimeter. The way to take care of him, I think, is to identify which defender has deep coverage and block the other one. Because the man who has deep coverage is going to worry about the tailback pass, and he's going to be watching the blocker. So if you think F is the support man, block F, L will stay back worrying about the tailback pass, and you can get away with sweeping wide uh, with leaving one man. <coughs> okay. Uh, we... We're going to throw off of this, and when we do, the word that we use to get this blocking on the sweep is the same word that we use to get this blocking on a sweep fake pass. So not only do the numbers sound alike, but we hope the words that we use for the blocking calls also sound alike. Uh, this is one variation of our sweep play where we have a man on the line of scrimmage and the fullback is too far away from him, really, to get him stopped, to keep him from penetrating. And so we say, guard, you take the penetrator. Fullback, you take the guard's man, the linebacker. And then we run the play the same way we run the sweep. The tailback runs to make the fullback's block be right, rather than to make the guard's block be right. Fine, no, no problem. Everyone does that type of thing. We also do it, uh, we do it, leaving one man in the perimeter unblocked. We exchange the fullback and the guard, but now I have the center blocked to the backside, leave one of these perimeter, perimeter defenders unblocked, and do that. A good little scheme. Sometimes there's hardly anything else to do if you're trying to, to tweak the ball. Uh, when we we go with the bootleg. We want it to look as much like the sweep as it possibly can. We say that the tackle and the guard on the backside can look almost exactly like the sweep. So can the center. The pulling guard gives the play away, but we only want to pull the guard if we need to. The quarterback walks up and says, you pull. He has a code word that says, you pull. I need you to pull. He doesn't need him to pull. That man doesn't pull. We run it as a naked bootleg. <coughs> The fullback does not look like sweep, but from the shotgun, you can have a tailback take off. I'll fake him this way. You can have a fake him this way. You can get the ball and fake here and come out spreading, and you've got one man going full speed that way and one man going full speed the other way, and it really freezes <laughs> on the defense. When, <coughs> when we make these fakes, we were, we're changing our thinking. We want the ball to go downfield as far as we can get it downfield. We don't want to throw eight-yard passes when we come out of these 
play action fake. We're going to put receivers way down the field because we have strong arms to do it. And, uh, and that's what will really take pressure off of our running game. But that is our identical uh, bootleg pass. The word identical says block it exactly like you block the sweep. And away we go. This is our sweep pass, uh, where again, it should look <coughs> just like the sweep. It should look exactly like the sweep. The tight end should block sweep, tackle guard, if the center's pulling for the middle linebacker, he should go ahead and pull. Backside can look almost exactly like sweep. And there goes the face. The fullback taking off for the perimeter defender looks exactly like sweep. And we should, we only have two blockers on the back side, and that's why the that's why we have this route, right? In case we need to throw the ball if the unblocked man rushes. Uh, but we can come out of that fake and throw uh, way on down the field. One of our touchdowns in the USC game, in our last game of the year, which was on television, uh, was off that, that action. The quarterback made his fake, and, and the defensive back lost the ball momentarily, and boom, there went six, six points. Uh, you get a better fake out of the shotgun than you do out of the eye. You get a slightly better fake out of split backs than you do out of the eye because there's more cross action for the linebackers to uh, pick up. Uh, now, we are discouraged about running a role play that comes all the way back into this hole back here uh, under the W. We used to ask our fullback to curl back and take and hit that hole against the W who was playing the quarterback on his bootleg fake. Became discouraged because it was spoiling our sweet face. Now, rather than do that, we run an option play. The quarterback starts his bootleg and then options the W. Options the W. Either gives the ball to the fullback who's coming along the line of scrimmage or keeps the ball himself. Little tumble action shovel type of play uh, against a reduced defense, it works rather well. And it's an, aesthetic, an aesthetically pleasing play, and it's a yard measure. A reverse is difficult to run. We ask the quarterback to call a reverse at the line of scrimmage so that we can wait for the optimum defense. We say quarterback, call the reverse between 35 and the 35 or between the 40, your own 40 and their 35, call it on first or second down when the, when the reverse faucet is on, you call it. <coughs> and wait for a defense that is reduced. And if you ever check on a second and 10 or any down, catch a 2D 500 man defense with a reduction on the weak side, there is no play in, on your list that is better than a reverse play. It's liable to run all the way into the end zone. And so we try to wait to get that version <coughs> of the sweep series call. Uh, next, uh, I have attempted to show here the tailback pass. We limit the tailback to throwing the ball to the outside on a corner type of route when there's no defender out ahead of the receiver. He doesn't ever try to throw between defenders. The man either has a clear track to the sideline or the tailback doesn't throw it. But the blocking should look exactly like the sweep. In fact, it is a sweep, and if he can't throw it, it turns into a sweep. And so with that series, we attempt, with all of this, well, uh, with all of that going on, we attempt to keep the sweep series alive. <coughs> there is no running, just a straight sweep <coughs> play over and over again. It's hard to get the ball back to the line of scrimmage doing that. But it sets up a lot of super great plays. And if the other plays are working, then the sweep can be a valuable play as well. Uh, in going from two backs to one back, we say that if we are using a motion man, most of our sweep series is intact. We can throw tailback pass, bootleg, we can reverse sweep. We can't run a roll off the sweep, no, we can't do that. We can't run a tumble play very well. But most of the stuff is good against, uh, or good from 
the single thing. We have, at UCLA, uh, had some success with our sweep series. We've had great thinking, we're proud of it. We're going to try to take that concept and put it with some <laughs> single back offense. Uh, we're a little short of fullback athletes and we want some single back anyway to use our talented receivers. And we're gonna try to do the same thing with single back that we've done with two back in running uh, the sweep. And get all the same extreme face going. We would like to be able to go up on a roll play and have the ball go this many places, have our own uh, our own version of Emmett Smith, we hope, uh, cutting back or going straight ahead or bouncing outside against certain defenses, have the quarterback take bootleg, spread out, or drop back. Totally dimensionalize a single back offense. Just very quickly. When you're facing out of the shotgun, Thinking out of the shotgun goes like this. The quarterback gets the ball and he moves with the back and puts leverage in this leg. He loads that leg as he does it. He moves with him and then takes off. And the back, of course, closes up and accelerates and it tells it. Um, single back. We either want to, if we're using a motion man, uh, block to the play side, <coughs> use the motion man to pick off the backside defender. One way to do it, you do it, nothing very revolutionary about that. Or we would like to bring him to block the blockers back and let him pick off the outside defender on the side of the play. And it is, it is with this blocking that the tailback can now dip to the outside. You see. There I've shown the quarterback taking back, but we would ideally like for the quarterback to do this. We would like for him to stand up there and say, okay, I've got a blocker on each of those players. There's a man back here unblocked. So when I go back to give the ball, I would like to give it and fake to occupy the unblocked man. <coughs> That's the optimum. Can't count on getting that uh, every time. Uh, we want to be able to throw with our dual blocking, where we have just two blockers on three defenders, and where the backside receiver runs a slant so that he's there in case our three defenders come. When we're doing it from a two-back sweep, we say, quarterback, sniff it out. And I actually have them go through the sniffing process. Then I know they're looking, are they going to rush me? Are they going to rush me? And then he turns around, boom, and puts his eyes back here first before he throws back to them. When we're doing it from a single back, he's still going to sniff in the same way. If I'm, if I'm doing like right there, <coughs> he's going to say, okay, can they rush me? Can they rush me? And he's going to start back, and if, and if they haven't rushed him, then he's going to go on back and make the same kind of fake that we make in our sprint draw series. But we've got two blockers on three people, and we've got to sight adjust the third man kind of, and he's got to peek and cheat a little bit in order to do that. But we want out of the role play to have a pass that looks exactly like the role. We don't want insert blocking and things that don't look alike. We want things that do look alike. Uh, this is an example of insert blocking off the roll play. This will not look like the roll. Great protection, okay. The back inserts himself on a linebacker. Uh, everyone else turns back away from that insert point, and you get everybody blocked. It's pretty, but it's not going to look like the run. That pass is not going to generate more of the running play, and that is what we want, the generation of more of the play. Uh, if we do this, the two can look, again, almost exactly alike. A bootleg without a puller. Uh, faking the roll, that's exactly what everyone does on the roll play. A tight end here can even block with his outside shoulder, 
slug with his outside shoulder, slug, and then roll on. So that his flock initially looks like he's blocking for a roll to the left. And we hope that uh, we can, you know, do what the Dallas Cowboys quarterback did in that Super Bowl. Emmett would run and run and run, and all of a sudden, the quarterback went out, boom, reaching for him, and he turned. I was sitting right in the end zone, looking right, looking right at him. And he turned and went back, and there were about 19 guys on that side of the hash mark, and two-thirds of the field over here with the quarterback and the receiver and, and the one defender. Uh, it can look easy. The point is it can look exactly like the run. It can be a part of a mini series where one play will generate more of another. Uh, now, this is uh, an example of a spread out pass. No reason why a quarterback cannot spread out off the tail of a roll receiver, why the tight end can't get his block, and why a good pattern cannot be run. No reason in the world. Our move, if we're going to come out and spread out, our move is to go one, two, three, four. And the fourth step is a reaching, accelerating step to the outside. So smoothly, it looks like this. If we're going to bootleg, the quarterback is to take his fourth step. He's got one, two, and then two short ones. And that's what gives him leverage to turn on. He comes out here and takes two quick ones and bootlegs. So try to keep that action really, uh, really sharp. Okay, that is the uh, that is the idea on tying those two series uh, together as a system. Uh, nothing wears defenders out like not being able to find the ball. That's discouraging to them. They want to be able to pick up their keys, pick their gaps, get to their spots, gang tackle the ball carrier, jump and generate more energy. That's what they want. Nothing takes it out of defenders, like uh, going with a fake here and all of a sudden realizing the ball's back here, or tackling the back and having the ball throw downfield 20 yards. Nothing wears them out quite like, quite like that. <clears throat> he used to coach the wishbone before defenses learned really to adjust <clears throat> to the wishbone. And we were on a rampage, and mostly because of fourth quarters, when people just could no longer find how to pick up all the different movements, and they would just get discouraged and just all but uh, all but collapse. Uh, okay, it's easy enough to make those things look approximately alike. It's a little harder to make some other things look alike. We would like for our uh, drop back pass offense to be able to go out onto the field and hold its own. We've always taken our sweep series for five or ten minutes and try to let it live by itself. Eleven people on defense, good defenders, nothing but sweep series plays coming to see if we can keep the defenders at bay with one series. And we've been able to do that. We're going to take our single back series out and do exactly the same thing. We have tried also to take our drop back pass onto the field and let it live with no other help by running draws and screens, throwing quick passes, and throwing the ball around the yard. Uh, a little harder now <coughs> on drop back pass. Okay, and the subject is not drop back passing. The subject is mini series. How to make things look alike. Uh, we, we want quick threats, we want draw threat, we want <coughs> The Miami University team does not fake especially well. Uh, they have an ingenious offense. They run four running plays, they throw a few passes, they win the national championship. How can that possibly be? Well, one of the things is their passes are designed so that the quarterback is dropping back and the single back is always right in there beside him. Do he's blocking or he's going off on a pass route, but they're always crossing. The faking is not good, but he's always in the vicinity. So you can't tell when it's going to be a draw play. 
Uh, the University of Florida runs very few plays. They have an ingenious scheme. One of the backs is always running by the quarterback on a draw fake as the quarterback drops back to throw. Uh, we have to have more of that in our offense, uh, however, however we get it. Uh, fine. Throw, quick pass, okay. Uh, screening. Uh, we we want a screen not only to look like a pass, but we say a screen is a pass, first of all. And everyone blocks pass. And so we sit out there and wait for the defense that is vulnerable to a screen and then try to make the two look <coughs> exactly alike. If we encounter this kind of defense like that, We've got six in a box, as we say, and it probably indicates zone defense. Uh, and these people can jump back. They can <coughs> the screen out to the left. Okay, fine. Center moves over. Guard moves over. This man is in area protection with the guard so that if he has to block, fine, he has to block. If he doesn't, he just sets up so the quarterback can throw the ball at his feet and won't have to get a sack. But this guard is freed of that block so that he can stay in formation with his other three. This man drops into zone, that's the, that's the fullback's man. He just sneaks up, comes out with his blockers, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, comes out with them, and they take off for the flag, wherever they are, left hash mark, right hash mark, 10 yard line, 50 yard line. They run at the flag, and there goes the ball. Uh, we want the play against the zone. We don't want it against the man. There are better things to do against man coverage than throw a screen. And when we do it, we hope it looks just like uh, the run. The best state defense probably of all the screen against is an eight-man drop. Uh, because you can get blockers on everybody and they're soft and the rush is minimal and, and that's as good a play as there is against a nice big a eight man drop. Uh, on the screen, we don't want the quarterback to give it away. We say you have to be a play actor. Uh, drop back, fine, go back your five steps. Go back your five steps, hit your receiver, maybe you can check one more, and then act like you're, you're escaping under pressure and throw your screen. But be a play actor. Um, fine. Screening. Drawing is very, very much more difficult. In order to make a draw look just like a pass, I think you have to ask a back to lead on a linebacker. And if you do that, then somewhere along the line, a pass has to have a back doing exactly what he does on a draw play. But <coughs> if you try to run a trap type of thing, Somebody from from this somebody from this side gets over to this side, if you will, um, and you, now you have to ask the back to pick off an in man. When you're trying to run a trap type of draw play, on one side it's not going to look like drop back pass, and we think it definitely definitely must. Uh, we do this with some success by dropping the quarterback straight back. Considerable success, I would say. I'll just draw one side of it. We have him come back, him come in, get the ball, and then we block this way, kick out, lead the tackle through. All right? <coughs> Fine. A counter-off tackle play, and if we can split them, we're usually on an open field because these people see drop back pass, they soften, and usually we get good soft place to run into. But it does not look like drop back pass. It looks like counter off tackle. And if they want to work on it uh, 20 times on Tuesday and Wednesday, they can probably jump it on Saturday. Uh, the BYU draw, which you see every time you watch BYU play for the last umpteen years, works this way. I swear, it's happened in every game 
for 25 <coughs> years. They block him, step him back like that. He releases like that. This tackle takes anything coming through the B-gap, nothing comes, he ensures, goes up. Those two block those two. Fine. Here comes the here comes the guard now kicking out on the man who's rushing the passer. And this man comes in now and gets his block on the linebacker. And there they go. It's an ingenious play. We are going to try to run it. Uh, but no one has been able, to, been able to copy it and run it anywhere near like BYU runs it. But they do have a trap action that looks like drop back pass because their tackle sets like that before he goes in. Uh, we must run, we say, uh, basically run a play with both with both tackles blocking the men rushing outside of the <coughs> This is where the draw play must start with those blocks. Fine, they twist and we pick up a twist just like we pick it up for a pass. We get it covered and attempt it to make the draw go. But we have to start there. What that means is, unavoidably, it means however it's blocked, it means that a back must block a linebacker. And that's hard to do. And there's no doing it at all. We, we, did a poor job last year. We everybody got hurt. We got all screwed up. We weren't faking good, and we'd go back to run a draw, and the linebacker wouldn't back up one inch. <coughs> and we had a heavy, heavy time trying to run a draw play. We're going to do two things to try to loosen that up. Three things. One, we're going to have a lot of pass action where the quarterback goes back, the back goes by him, and we're going to teach the quarterback to go back. He already knows it. Go back and drop down to fake and set up the throw. Or going to the other side, go back one, two, three, four, and throw off this pit. <coughs> so we're going to teach the quarterback to fake draw action when he's going to pass it. We're also going to use a wraparound play and ask the quarterback to take the ball and to throw it, throw it on like a three-step drop, wrap it around, give it to a back who's here, and away he goes, just to try to get the linebackers to back up. <clears throat> and we're also going to take a page out of Florida's book and go back and actually shovel the ball. I'm, I'm going to drop back fine. I'm going to draw this back on the right side, go back and just shovel it under, doing just like that. <coughs> anything, anything to be able to get the tackles to be able to do what they do on drop back half, which means the back has to block a linebacker, do anything to get that linebacker to back up so that we can get the draw to make it. And that is about it for uh, for dropping back and making the two look alike. Uh, the very, very best counter is <coughs> draw he has to have the quarterback carry the ball. So he can he starts spraying backs out of there with him carrying the ball. Now I'm not sure how he played defense. Sat next to uh, an astute retired coach at a luncheon. And uh, he was thinking forwardly and said, Tennessee will win the national championship. <clears throat> and how do you know? And he said, because they're running the quarterback. And he sees five receivers spraying and that quarterback, Heath Shooter, taking that ball and running the trap to the counter off tackles and the draws. And, sees nobody home. And that, that is an awesome concept. I love to look at film and get, you see high school, you look at high school players and you see all these neat things and I just wallow in that stuff myself. But I was interested to, to watch Virginia rise to number one in the country. How does Virginia get to be the number one football team in the country? That's impossible. So I get a film. What the hell's going on? I put it on, and wouldn't you know it, here's the quarterback running the off-tackle play, all right? He's running. Everybody else is, is out running pass routes. There's nobody home. There's nobody home. To me, it would be the, the greatest of all new offensive ideas to get a Bo Jackson type of guy who could throw outs and run traps and run counter OTs. There would be no such thing as double coverage. Too deep would be history. Uh, so the very best counter 
in drop back passing is is that <coughs> quarterback of carrying the ball. Uh, I I just had an excuse to write a, a little note to Steve Young who showed up in our football office. And it's just the kind of guy you want him to be, best player in the world, <coughs> just the kind of guy you want him to be, super guy, just down to earth. But I just want to tell him that he does the best job I've ever seen done with the hidden statistics. The three biggest things that affect football are interceptions, block kicks, and the quarterback running for the first down line when he should have gotten sacked. Those things make unbelievable differences. It should be a seven-yard sack, young breaks loose, boom, first down. Uh, that is what you need to have goals. Somehow, we don't ask the quarterback to be a runner but we judge him very critically on his willingness and his ability to run for that first down line. We practice sliding into second base and diving in like Pete Rose. We practice all the fundamentals of it. We want that dang first down. I thought Troy Aikman in the Super Bowl played a beautiful game I've ever seen a pro quarterback play. He was Harris. One sack for one yard, no interceptions, unbelievably high percentage of completion, big victory. But twice in that game, he ran for first downs, and once he turned a, a likely sack into a second and two. It was a, an awesome production from the quarterback position. Okay, make drop back pass offense, keeping it coming. Now, a little cover <coughs> with some other series. How does one go on to the field with a sprint draw play? and make pass look so much like run that he can stay out there with one series and play all the way down to say the 10 yard line. Well, if it's one of two defenses, it's possible to do. If it is a slide defense, you're gonna have a sprint draw action now, I'm gonna do this with these people, either throw the pass or run the run. If this is the defense, Something like that. And these people do this. If he releases on the pass and the run, if he either releases or blocks right there, if this man blocks right there, if these two block those and slip up on him if it's the run, if these two block those two, and there they come, if that man will release to the outside, run or pass, and not necessarily there, but possibly. If that man will take off in that way, block him on the run and keep releasing on the pass. <coughs> you can stay out there all afternoon and run the running play right there or the passing play. And you can take your take, and when the ball is right at that point right there, you can still not tell whether it's a run or a pass. We've done it many dozens of times. But what does that is not the play, it's the defense. You take another defense, and you can't find a way to make the run look like the pass. And the play will not be good for you uh, late in the game. Playing, for example, a middle linebacker defense, trying to run sprint draw football. Who is to block whom? How do we make pass look like run? If we want this, if we want him to come out like that, we can't block the run that way. In order to block the run, <coughs> the tight end has to block him, and this man has to block down here, and the fullback has to block there. Well, you can't block the pass that way. I won't go further. You can see it. You're astute coaches. There's no way to make run look like pass. You can run the play a few times and it'll dry up on you. Okay? There's one more place where you can take the sprint draw series onto the field, I believe, and have the two, the run and the pass, keep going through 20 plays. The defense cannot catch up. If it's the old three technique, seven technique type of thing, like this, however, <coughs> however the backside is, if it's like that, okay. And if, if on the pass, the tailback has been turning back to take the backside line back, 
these people fund. They're blocking on the back side. And if the pullback is coming up on the pass to block either of the two linebackers, okay, either of the two linebackers, on, if he blocks the inside linebacker on the, well, poof, I messed that up. I messed that up with my tight end throwing. But this is where the two can look alike, okay? If the tight end is going out there and the fullback is coming in to block on the pass, he blocks one of the two on the run, he blocks the inside linebacker. That tackle is blocking like that, the tight end is blocking like that, the tailback is turning back to run, to run, or to block, then the two things are going to look so much alike that you can hardly tell them apart. They look a little slightly more alike than the other situation did, but almost exactly alike. And you can run that play over and over and over again. Okay, my point for purposes of running spread draw <coughs> at the mini series is that the defense will determine whether or not you can do it. Right? We don't try to screen off of <coughs> spread draw action. We think of the, the, the throws to the backs and the flats take the places of the screen play, and so we don't try to complicate our screen blocking and fit it to to the spread draw. <coughs> All right, so much for for that uh, proposition. Uh, very difficult to take any kind of an off-tackle play and find <coughs> enough counters for it to have it live on through the day. We all love to block off-tackle, kick him out, fine, pull the guard through, <coughs> run like the old days, bang him. Wherever he goes, very, very difficult. We have found to find any kind of a play that counters that. Yes, we have come out on bootlegs with guard pulling. Yes, modest, a modest success. Uh, yes, we've tried to block the pullback on the man that he kicks out, try to tear his legs off from under him and come out around. But the, the, the wide play doesn't look like the off tackle. Yes, we've tried to fake this and throw out here to a single round, but it doesn't even approach the kind of dimensionality that we get out of a sweep series. And so that is not something that we ever say is a mini-series. That's just a play. Sometimes we can run it, most of the time we cannot. Whatever, whether we run it or not, it will not generate more of itself. How does <clears throat> How does one use the counter-off tackle series to generate more of itself? Uh, there are four ideas here. And we've played with all of them, settled on our way, but how does the inside part of a counter-OT play look just like the pass? On a counter-OT, <laughs> fine. The guard pulls, the tackle pulls, and leaves. How do you do that on run and pass? Uh, University of California, great number two record, year before last, fine. They had great with Russell White, great counter OT players. Whenever they threw a pass, they pulled both of those people, they tried to get him out under here, fine, fine. Sometimes they did, sometimes they didn't. But the run looked exactly like the pass. All right, they even had this man coming in, I'm sorry, they had this man coming in and setting up a block right in here. So the run and the pass looked exactly alike. But the quarterback was forever running for his life because there was no one to block someone who came off the edge like that. Okay, just a fair way to do it. I looked at 11 of their 12 games, watched every time they did it. <coughs> it wasn't anything that we were anxious to copy after after seeing all of the plays. But that's one way to make the two look exactly alike. Uh, another way is always to have in presence an end of line blocker like this, whatever the whatever the formation is. Fun. Run counter OT, pull both of those people, and now when you throw the pass. 
pull both of them, full speed, run them back, full speed. But block that man and just do without his route. Good way to do it. Miami does it that way. Run the play, game in and game out, and it stays alive. Because the run and the pass look exactly the same. Okay? Uh, there. We opted to do something different. And we're not sure that it's best. Because in order for us to justify the counter OT series, we have to take it all to the field, run and pass, and have the two <coughs> one another. We say that uh, there are enough defenses where these people <coughs> can pull. Both of them can pull. And we can sneak a guard out and keep him ahead of the play. And the quarterback and come out, make his fake at the counter OT to the right, and throw his hats to the left with both the guard and the guard. <coughs> Most of the time, pulling full speed. We try to have our cake and eat it too, uh, with the guard always present. Now, <coughs> when it doesn't work, it doesn't work because of these things. There is a defense that defines pulling both <coughs> Defense is lined up like that. We say that in order, if there's a man outside, the tackle has to block. The tackle has to block, the guard has to block. Okay? And now the, this man comes out, and there's no fake whatsoever with our system. And that is not acceptable. That is not acceptable. But against another defense, against another defense, against an ordinary reduced defense, we can pull both people. Both people, ordinary reduced, like this. Okay, fine. Pull. He can pull fast as possible. He can pull right across that three technique face. And now this guard can slip out, and we can hope to eat our cake and have it too. Make it get our good faith, plus get our leading guard. Uh, in order to make the play be viable at all, the back's angle has to be the same on run and pass. And we're the world's worst culprits in violating this. But if a back, fine, run in the counter OT run, the back is in here to, to take care of any penetration between him and the center. <coughs> in order to make the pass look just like the run, that man has to go up under, go up under that man. Fine, guard's going to come out blocking has to go up under him and as fast as possible, without going downfield an inch, if he doesn't have to, take off for the flat. And now maybe we can run the traditional kind of pattern with the play. Trying to make the two look a lot. Coach, who goes first? The, the, the fullback go and with the guard? The guard comes around behind the fullback. The, the fullback goes fairly first. Um, I, want to, I want to go over one more little mini series right now. What is the best offense to play? What a question. What is the best offense to play? You can't study football and reach a conclusion. Because this offense wins, that offense wins. So we're left in a, in a quandary. Uh, we don't have fullback athletes. We think we have to do this. And, but what wins? We get different ideas. And we get too much offense and all of those things. But what wins? is the dimensionality that wears the defenders out. That's what has to come through. Uh, is, is one back offense on the wane? Is two back offense coming back in? It generally looks like that to me. What happened with two back offense, those linebackers would sit right back there and they had their keys, they know what to do, full flow, cross action, half flow, they hit those gaps and they got really hard to run. And then they got back there with a single back, and now one of those two linebackers had to go out here and cover that guy that was running in the flat, and now they were still trying to play gap control, and that one linebacker had two gaps. And he could do that if it was a fullback running a bunch of straight ahead stuff. But if it was a big old talented runner coming around and slipping in the hole, there was a gap uncovered. And so one back offense was the rage. Uh, 
People don't do that anymore. They're playing two gap players and single covering and, and doing things to keep you from getting those openings in the defensive line. What is better, two back, one back? I am the, I don't know. But our approach is going to be to try to do both and keep them tied as closely together as we possibly can. Uh, pass protection, keep it related to one another and the, a lot of the runs are the same, the counter OTs, they're all the same. Try to keep them as closely related as we can and just fake like crazy. Set up a whole new concept of faking. Put the quarterback at one another's throats, competing with one another to be the best faker on the team. Uh, gosh, I wish I knew where to go to find out what the best offense is. I know a great offense generally is the same offense you ran three years ago. A great offense uh, is an offense where when somebody comes to see you play, they know just about what they're going to see. A great offense gets back some clean openings. It doesn't stack asses all day long. Great offenses uh, do that. Uh, and aren't there some ingenious ones? Brigham Young, uh, They every year they do something sensational. I mean, they lose three in a row, and then their quarterback is All-American after being a Heisman Trophy winner the year before. Everybody thinks he's, he's dead. He's a dead man. He makes first-team All-American. They're unbelievable the way they keep coming up, and they do the same stuff over and over again year after year. Fresno State out our way. Ingenious. Play two-back offense mostly, and just tear the field apart with their stuff. So I guess it's mostly what you have learned to do, <coughs> and... Uh, and what your, what your athletes know and what you can keep track of and whatever, whatever it is, an offense has to function like a religion functions. It has to have all of the answers as far as your players are concerned. All right? Every, if this didn't work, it's because we didn't do that. It can't ever be because the leader or the coach got the wrong design. You lose them, you lose their spirit if you have that. It has to have all of the answers. And if it doesn't work, uh, you go fix it. And you keep doing the same thing. They can't feel that you're jumping all over the place. Or they will have no religion. And if you don't believe in it when something goes wrong, then you didn't believe in it in the first place. So you get something that you can believe in. And something where the players will blame themselves if it doesn't work. That is what has to happen. That sounds funny for a coach to say but that's what has to happen. As soon as they blame the coach, you're in trouble uh, psychologically. We all know that. Okay. <clears throat> Making things look alike. What does one do with a split inside? How do you how do you have offense to a split inside? Whether one back, two back, whatever. How do you run there and have anything that goes with anything else? That's the hardest problem of all. <coughs> yes, we run a sweet play when we can out of the eye and the center can read and get everybody blocked. Uh, but that's the tough one. It's easy with, with two tight ends. It's easy with no tight ends. But when you have one open inside, it's tough to know what to run right back in there. Uh, draw play, yes, has moderate success. Uh, we run uh, a, a, a short side sweep play where the blocking is as follows. This man blocks something. He cuts something. I'm going to have one or the other of these two people pull for the linebacker. Either guard is going to pull for the linebacker. And he takes off and runs. Down the, down the chute, right behind that pulling guard, and the quarterback makes his exchange and takes as hard as he can the other way. But it really doesn't go. We don't have a trap play off of it the way uh, the, the way the Fresno State does, the way the old Pittsburgh Steelers used to. We don't have that. It's just a, it's just a play with a good bootleg face. Uh, we don't even try to run a blast play anymore, where you just lead a fullback up in there because the defenders are so damn good that you wind up with no gain as often as you wind up with any gain. No one out our way can make that play go, it seems. Um, what, is, what is 
what is hard, what is hard. And we do not have, all we're going to try to do is draw, we're going to have a, a, call a sweet play where the, the center blocks away, okay, where the defense is like this, like that, we can leave him unblocked, a la Alabama with their national championship team, put that fullback on him, block him, and just run the tailback down there on to that unblocked <coughs> Yes, we're going to try to make a little bit that way, but that play is only so good. Um, there's your dilemma. How to set up some offense when you have an open end, an open inside. Uh, fine. Making things, making things look alike. I mentioned the way that we want to take a play onto the field and test it and don't have anything else with it. It's all sweeps or all drop back passes or all counter OT plays and see how long we can keep the defense at bay. It has to pass that kind of test. Okay. Uh, beyond <coughs> that, what do we attempt to do to keep the ball moving? We had a terrible experience last year. I'm not going to stand up here and make one excuse. We just got caught without being ready to do what had to be done, and we got our butts beat. And we came back and and got better toward the end of the season. So there's hope in everyone's in everyone's mind. What do we do to become a great offensive team? Uh, we're going to attempt to do these things. First of all, we're going to attempt to put <coughs> a base of fundamentals under our offensive players that cannot be disputed. <coughs> we say that in order to block people, you have to be able to work with your feet, divorced from your arm. You're going to lose power when you're blocking. I'm going to go back into the series we're going to do this with in a minute. But as you come off to block, to zone block, you have to come off and the feet have to keep moving just like a, just like a bulldozer track moves. And when you strike your blow, that bulldozer track has to keep right on moving. Just like a bulldozer goes up to a tree and hits the tree, the track doesn't stop. Your feet can't stop. And yet, Mother Nature tells you as soon as you hit something, your feet compensate. They stop. And so we're going to work endlessly to keep the bulldozer track going when the arms strike something for our zone blocking. Next, we're going to, to another, the other place where you lose your power, when you come up on something and it moves, Mother Nature tells you to reach, to react with your upper body. There's nothing natural about doing everything with the feet. Pass protection, we know how to do it. We put our hands in there, we do our pass pro drills, we have mirror drills, fine. But going forward, we don't do that. The target moves, the target moves, and we don't know how to keep the track going and do all of the movement with the feet. So we're going to come up on the, the target, come up on the target, come up on the target, and hit it, and hit it, and hit it. Then we're going to come up on the target and have it move six inches, have it move six inches and catch it with the feet, and then 12 inches, and then 24, and learn to keep that power going at all times. So we're going to base the offensive approach on the fundamentals in the feet, and get everybody, get everybody slugging. Okay? Primarily, use zone blocking, because there's so much stuff going on, expansions and contractions. <coughs> Primarily, use zone blocking and bring it back up behind them full speed and then fake like, fake like wild. Uh, what else gets the ball, gets the ball moving and makes the great, makes a great offense? Uh, we would like to experience moving <coughs> the ball. We get caught in a little field, there's no room to really go up and down the field, but we've got to. We've got the players want they can them they have a meeting and they talk about it. They want to hoop it up and feel the ball move and charge and they want to be released. Well, the problem really is on our practice field where we have to practice them on the whole spot. We want to get out there and turn them loose so they can practice, even with rejoicing that we want them to do after they make uh, uh, some yardage. What, uh, what else to have a great offensive team? 
stone blocking, the great faking, always, always working on trust. We want our players to go out to spring practice Say, here we go again, button up, baby, get her down. Here we go. We go right back to him uh, every every afternoon. Uh, the players to be in competition with one another, of course. Uh, not destructive competition, healthy competition. Uh, we think the best way to do that is to have a first line, and then have a second line, let them compete with one another, <coughs> the same way in the backfield. <coughs> I think the quarterbacks, I count. I measure everything the quarterbacks do. I rank them one, two, three, four, four candidates. In each area, you have a ranking. Uh, in faking, in running option plays, you have a ranking. You're one, you're number four. Then we add up all the numbers to see who has the highest, the highest average. So they just can't come out there and take anything like the day off. Uh, we measure what, what the, the passing attack produces on our field. For example, each receiver is going to have an average published, daily published, average gain per catch. Uh, and if he if he drops the ball, fine, that's zero. That has to count as one of his attempts. But it's an average. Somebody has 18, somebody has 16, but they're going to compete to try to get deep, get downfield to get the ball. Each quarterback is going to have an average gain per throw. And so they'll be encouraged to try to get the ball downfield and not just dump it off short. Those things will be published, so they're going to be competing with one another in every uh, situation. How else to have a, a great offensive team to come back after a, a miserable, a miserable year? Uh, we we want to keep it simple. How simple? Simple enough after last year's experience, so that we can go out two days before the game and have a test, and have everybody pass the test. So that the last day is totally for the generation of energy. Worked for a great coach once. He used to say, you have to generate energy, and you don't do that until all the questions have been answered. And you can start getting psychologically ready for the game. So that's going to be a checkpoint for us. On a Thursday before a game, to be able to have a test, and everyone answers it and gets 100. And then Fridays can just be for getting juiced up, if you will, for taking on the charge. Uh, what else to have? A great offensive, a great offensive football team. I talked to each, each, each interview, each of our players in the last couple of weeks, and I asked our very astute tight end, Brian Allen, what he thought our team needed. And it was an open question. He could have talked about it. discipline or weight or more harm than anything. And he said, we just need big plays. The, the, the thing that juices a team up quicker than anything is any kind of a big play that you really get maximum juice out of. And so when we make a play, we want to back to jump up and show that ball and run back to the huddle and, and celebrate that thing. That's what's going on in hockey and basketball and all over the place. You want to see our women's volleyball team at UCLA, what they do after they get play, the production. Anything to keep the juice, to keep the juice flowing. Um, and we want those big plays to keep coming. How do you, how do you call plays? to keep the big plays coming. I think you do this. I think you try to make the big plays happen on first down. You always on first down try to do something that's going to get you at least all of it. Okay? And then if you don't make it, you just claw your way to the first down. Line. That might mean another pass. It may mean two runs, whatever. You claw your way the most efficient way possible to the first down line. But when you have a, you know, if you make your first down with your second and your third down, your first downs are for your big plays. Give the big things a chance to happen on, uh, on first down. Uh, how much run, how much pass, I would personally like not even to have the distinction. Just keep the ball moving downhill. Against some defenses you've got to throw all the time against another team, you've got to run. That was another revelation that I had that in in looking into the Virginia team, how they were winning the national championship. Well, they were never running when there were too many players up there. They were only running when there was there were six against their six blockers, if you will. Uh, that's the way Barry Sanders runs with the Detroit Lions. He doesn't run when there are too many guys up there. He waits until they're playing pass defense, and then they give him the draw. That's another way to do it. Just don't think pass and run. Just think numbers and run where the numbers are right. Pass where the numbers are right. Uh, 
that is what we what we hope to do. What the hell else can we do to have great <laughs> offensive, <laughs> offensive football? Uh, we would like to keep the linemen and the backs in the same room as much as possible. We don't want to separate line faculty. We want them in there, learning their running plays together, working together, if you will. Uh, <coughs> we want a lot of high repetition work. We, we know we have excellent pass protection because we know how to do pass protection. We have it all laid out in the system. We get all the problems listed. We know how to go out and work on them. We've got it scripted. And we can go out there and get as many as five pass protection problems in one minute as many as 25 in five minutes. I say the snap count, the defensive coaches are over there doing their twists and so forth. They just move, catch it, go back in line and hop, boom, move and catch it. Here comes a sight adjust problem. The only time we deliver the ball is if it is sight adjust. Every other time we just don't throw it. And four times a minute, often five times a minute, we can get a pass protection problem. So any play that we run, we would like to be able to high repetition. So there's no question about uh, what to do. Uh, chair drills are magic. We can't have them. Uh, that, when I was at Alabama, we had chair drills every day, and they were magical. But we didn't have room to do them where we are now. So we have to go <coughs> to the field uh, to get that done. Uh, we, we, we think that to drill a play, if you can just play the defense right, you're okay. Well, you can't get people to go over on defense and play it right. Unless you're Jim Sweeney at Fresno State, and he used to get four graduate assistant coaches. You know what they did? They played the four defensive backfield positions. That was their job at Fresno State. The hell with making up cards and all that, going down to the airport and all that. They were the DBs. <laughs> you get somehow get the defense played right, and if you don't have the talent over there to get it lined up right, then you got to put it on cards and somehow strip the cards. And so we say that in spring practice, our graduate assistants are our elaborate card system. We know the plays we want to run this week against. Here they are, one, two, three, boom, here we come. Uh, we want to do that to try to get uh, try to get the repetition. We would like to talk the players into totally exaggerating their form. The very best offensive work I have ever been around was with the Kansas City Chiefs, and I had precious little to do with it. Frank Gans was the head coach. He's a madman. Carl Mock was the line coach. And this very day, our UCLA coaches are with Carl down in San Diego. Uh, but the idea was, <coughs> when the quarterback said it's the snap count, you started to move, and you never, ever, ever, ever stopped until you had your man where you wanted him, and you struck an eagle position, if you will. From start to finish, that's all you could do. And then we'd go right after practice and put it on and see if everybody did it right. And we had excellent running offense, and we'd like to approach that with our guys, but uh, that's really, really hard to get. Really hard to get. Uh, but we would like to say that once the quarterback says hot, you never get a foot out of place. Your block is only as strong as its weakest step. You keep right on going until you finish the man off with that kind of uh, exaggerated form. I don't know uh, about discipline. Uh, what is discipline? You see wild teams on TV, and uh, what is discipline today? Is Team X discipline? They taunt and they cheer and celebrate in the end zone. I don't think any of, any of that has anything to do with discipline or not having discipline. Discipline is what you do from the time the quarterback says hut until the time the play is over. And during that time, you should have absolutely no choice. And players love discipline. They love it. And they are no different today than they were in the, the year 3000 BC. People love discipline. And if you give them discipline, they will worship you for it. They will bring their children back to go to the same school, to be in the same program, to get the discipline. They'll talk about it. If they come back and see the same team that they played on not having discipline, they will scorn that team. People love discipline. There are too many examples from all of our experiences. 
I remember once in the early 70s, I was coaching at UCLA, and it was the worst time in the history of the country. I mean, it was the awfulest time. And there was a big mural in the student union, a big picture of the world, a big dick right in the middle of it. Screw the world was the theme of a big mural. It was a terrible time. We've almost forgotten how terrible it was. But in the middle of all of that going on, I saw football players have the best discipline I had ever seen at that point. And all we did was ask them for it. They were screwing around, they were hundreds, and they were, they were terrible, a bunch of dogs, okay? So we had a meeting, went down to the end of the field and said, now, when we run our hundreds, let's agree that nobody will ever step on that clump of grass. And that'll mean everyone, every time, went all the way. And after the season, we had the nicest, freshest little clump of grass at the end of that 100-yard course you've ever seen. Everyone had always gone <coughs> his 100 yards when we did our conditioning work. And they loved it, and they talk about it to this day. People love any kind of discipline. Uh, the Muslims are starving themselves. They're fasting all day, every day now, just right in the middle of Ramadan. Uh, who wants to go without eating all day long? Except they all do it because it's a discipline. And it brings them together and reminds them of what their purpose is. And you can do anything as long as you have discipline. <coughs> and somehow we've got to find all kinds of ingenious ways to ask players to, to do that type of thing. Our objective uh, is to bounce back at UCLA and have a great offensive football team after having uh, just an average one. Uh, we're going to do it, not knowing whether two back offense is best or one back, but we're going to do it by always insisting that any, any play we have, any series we have, it has to go onto the field and survive by itself. Goal line, short yardage, single back, two back, whatever it is, that series has to keep generating more of itself. And we're going to measure things, and, and there's going to be nothing more, uh, more emphasized than the workings of these many systems that we, that we use. Well, are there any questions that you have at this point? Or? Okay, y'all can elaborate on it. Well, I sure appreciate your attention, if not your weather. Thank you so much. <laughs>